Lots of tournament experience for this Gonzaga team, even for sophomore forward Corey Kispert, who you hear in that highlight and who will be joining us here momentarily. It's After Hours with Amy Lawrence on CBS Sports Radio. So the Zags end up with the number one seed in the West despite losing in their conference championship, and it's become a tradition. Will Gonzaga be the first number one seed to get knocked out of the tournament. We've got a poll up on our show Twitter, After Hours CBS. You can also find the link to the After Hours Bracket Challenge there and on our Facebook page as well. Thanks so much for tuning in to our Selection Sunday blowout. And we are pleased to welcome sophomore forward Corey Kispert in Spokane. After the Selection Show, you end up with a number one seed. Corey, congratulations. What was the mood like watching that Selection Show this afternoon? Uh, I mean, well, we didn't know whether it was going to be a one or a two, um, but for us, it really didn't matter much. Uh, we were going to play close to home either way, um, but we were really thankful and excited, really excited that we got the one seed uh, secured, and we're really thankful that the committee saw us as one of the four best teams in the country. Well, let's get the question about the conference championship out of the way, Corey. You guys had scored 94 points against St. Mary's at one point during the regular season. And you had 100 points in the semifinals of the conference tournament. So what happened in the championship game? I mean, they kind of just threw us a curveball as far as their plan goes. Um, Really aggressive in the gaps. uh, Really uh, took away our ability to be uh, free free handling the ball, uh, especially in the paint, and kind of clogged the lane against our bigs. Um, And then also we just weren't – we just didn't come out and we were not energetic and – uh, super lethargic, and it was really out of character for us altogether. But um, needless to say, we've looked hard in the mirror as as far as uh, things we need to correct and um, really working hard to get those things uh, right. I know you end up with the one seed despite that loss, which is good, but how much does it sting that you don't end up as the conference champs? Uh, I mean, it stings a little bit, but um, we put it behind us, and uh, it never feels good to lose, especially to St. Mary's, kind of our conference rival, but um, we got some we had some bigger and better things to focus on moving forward. For sure. Corey Kispert's a sophomore with Gonzaga men's basketball, joining us here on Selection Sunday after hours with Amy Lawrence on CBS Sports Radio. It's quite a tradition now with the Zags. In fact, it's become a March tradition to see Gonzaga either as a one seed or very high up in these brackets. And I know you weren't there when the team went to the Final Four of the championship two years ago. Uh, but for moments like these, love to follow Gonzaga. What other schools recruited you, Corey? Yeah, uh, I mean, I was actually recruited pretty heavily by uh, Virginia, another number one seed um, across the country. and. Um, part of the reason why I chose to come here was exactly for that reason, just how close um, to my home it was. I'm from Seattle. I'm a Seattle kid. So um, just kind of right across the mountains in eastern Washington. So I was close enough that um, family and friends could come watch me play at any time when they wanted to. And um, Also, like you mentioned, uh, winning is huge here. And um, it's kind of an expectation rather than a hope uh, for for the people that uh, play for us and put on the Gonzaga jersey and um and especially, it's just a lot of fun uh, being here in Spokane. It's kind of the, the big deal. It's the big NBA team here in Spokane. And uh, the community loves us, and we love them right back. So it's it's a really fun environment to play in every night. And i um, really happy with the decision that I've made so far. Well, being a one seed certainly does include pressures, and it certainly does include a whole lot of attention on you, and that's part of being at Gonzaga. But how much does playing the schedule that you play throughout the year and getting some of that national attention prepare you for the sport's biggest stage? Yeah, I mean, there's, there's been a high expectation on us from the from the very first game of the year. Um, we were we, we've been uh, under the radar and under the microscope for uh, the entire season, but. Um, to be honest with you, Amy, I don't think that the, we would want that any other way. Um, playing playing with each other and uh, being on the floor with each other every night is uh, what we are built for and what we're meant for. And um, it's the place where we're the happiest and we feel the best about ourselves and about each other. And so, um, honestly, there's really no pressure. It's just what we love to do. And um, going out there and letting it rip each, each and every game day with our guys is, is, one, is some of the most fun I've ever had. It's not something that every school and every player gets to experience, but do you get used to having the target on your backs? Yeah. I mean, it's it's every, um, some of the places that we go and play during the conference season um, struggle to fill their arenas on a nightly basis. And we're kind of the the big show that comes around once a year for them. And um, 
But honestly, also on a national level, I feel like it's it's, it's still a little bit um, that we're kind of the mid-major school from Nowheresville, Washington, that um, people kind of look down upon and disregard. So even though we do have that, you know, that target on our back and um, we are a nationally, you know, recognized program, uh, we still kind of have that chip on our shoulder trying to trying to prove each and every day that we belong with the Blue Bloods. Really? Do you still feel that way? Even after a Final Four and a national championship game appearance and multiple number one seats, that Gonzaga has to prove that it's part of the elite? I mean, a little bit, honestly. Um, we're kind of we're kind of always still counted out, and people still have their doubts about us. And um, whether or not that those are true, um, and those are really worth um, paying attention to, um, is another it's a completely different story. But uh, we honestly, as players, still believe that uh, people look down on us, you know, for not being uh, in the ACC or the Big Ten or you know whatever conference, and um, the the hundreds of other excuses and hundreds of other. Uh, criticisms that people have for us all right that Gonzaga against the world mentality so Corey since that's the case how much do your fans in Spokane and the region mean to you oh the world that's that's honestly the reason one of the reasons why um each and every person decides to come here is just how much um the people love us and take care of us and you know treat us as their own sons here in Spokane um it's it's kind of like the big NBA team here it's a big event and uh, we get recognized kind of walking through the streets and um, yeah, yeah but, but, but honestly also on campus we just feel like normal people too um, we blend in really well with the, with the student body here and uh, we feel right at home uh, whether it's in the classroom or walking around on campus or on the floor in front of uh, thousands of people and um, Gonzaga is a special place if no one if you haven't been if, if anybody hasn't uh, got a chance to come out here and visit uh, they really should because uh, it's truly unlike anything I've ever seen before. Those fans will have to make their way to Salt Lake City for Gonzaga's opening game against the number 16 seed, either Fairleigh Dickinson or Prairie View. That's a game being played in Dayton over the next several days. Corey Kispert is with us from Gonzaga, a sophomore, a starter on the team. It's after hours on CBS Sports Radio. So as you look back over the last couple of years and spending time with guys who have a lot of tournament experience, as well as Coach Mark Few, where do you feel like you've grown the most in your game? Um, I've, I've learned, a, I've learned a lot more than I can really, um, take in right now. And it's going to take a while for me to, um, really, really think about that. But, um, playing under coach view has been an absolute treat. He's a brilliant basketball mind and, and a brilliant coach and, um, someone that I have a ton of respect for, for the way he, um, not only handles himself on the floor, but also off the floor with his family and his personal issues. Uh, he's a really down to earth guy and, um, you know, doesn't let things uh, influence him too much. And um, as far as me as a player, I've just I've kind of learned how to um, this year, especially uh, fit into a role. We have a lot of really big, big time players on our team and a lot of guys who are receiving national attention and um, they deserve every bit of it. They're really good and really special and talented. But, um, you know, my ball, my my job every night isn't necessarily to put the ball on the hoop. I'm not I'm not going out there and getting 20 points a game, but. Um, I'm just doing whatever I can to um, do the things that, you know, keep our team winning and hopefully will keep our team advancing in March. When I watch your team play and I think about your style, the word that comes to mind is balance. Corey, how would you describe the style of basketball that you all play? Yeah, uh, that's a really good word to use. Um, We're incredibly hard to guard just because we have a lot of really talented players on our team and our offense. Um, kind of plays into each of our strengths. Um, like you said, if, if you if you clog the paint and you try to disrupt our bigs, we can kick out and we have three guys that are shooting close to 40% from three. And uh, Killian, who hasn't played a lot this year, but he shoots, I mean, he's like a 45% career uh, three-point shooter. So we're we're dangerous from, from, from all three levels and all facets of the game and um, can come attack you or attack the defense or attack other teams in, in multiple different ways. And um, also, we just love to see each other succeed. Um, it doesn't really matter who gets the bucket or who scores or who's in the spotlight. Um, we're honestly all just happy for each other's successes and really happy to see um, our teammates and our, honestly our best friends as well succeed. Awesome. Except I have to ask, Corey, how do we know that 
come your tip-off for the opening game of the tournament, we're not going to see that same lethargic start. That's the word you used. That same lethargic start that you had against St. Mary's in the conference championship. I mean, are you kidding me? Like, it's, it's, that, was, that was one of the most painful losses I've had to go through. And um, seeing a rival like that uh, hoist up a trophy that we honestly thought we deserved um, throughout our play during the season in that first game in the conference tournament uh, really stung. And if that's not a motivator and enough proof for, for anybody wondering what we're going to come out and play like uh, during the season, then I don't know what it is. Look for Gonzaga in that opening game against the number 16 seed that comes out of Dayton and sophomore starter Corey Kispert. You can find on Twitter at Corey underscore K-I-S-P-E-R-T. Maybe this is the year, Corey. Thanks so much for a couple of minutes. Good luck. Thank you, Amy. I really appreciate it. Thank you, Amy.